This is Mr. Holsey of 8 Squared's Officially Understood Science, and today we're going to be working on counting atoms. Before we start to count atoms, we need to make sure we understand the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures. Elements are pure substances. We cannot break them down any further than they already are. So when the subatomic particles of an element are separated from its atom, it no longer retains the properties of that element. So that's going along with the idea that if I have helium and I lose a proton, it is no longer helium because protons identify the element and it would now be hydrogen. So we can't break down elements, but mixtures are things that can be separated. So, and we can do this by physical means, such as a thing of jelly beans. We can look at jelly beans and pick out all the green ones or the pink ones or, or, or whatever your favorite jelly bean is. And we can do that physically because they're not stuck together. This can be a grouping of different compounds or, or elements, but they are not bound together like, like the air around us. Not all the, the air isn't bonded together. We're breathing in lots of different gases. Compounds, on the other hand, are two or more different elements bonded together. And we cannot be separated. We cannot separate these easily because they are sharing electrons. And so they are bonded together chemically. And we can't break them easily without using lots of different energy. So now that we know the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures, let's talk about counting atoms. So to identify these different elements, we have to look for capital letters. Capital letters identify uh, the different elements. So we have a capital H, so on and so forth. So these different elements are identified by capital letters. Remember, in science, whenever we are working with the letter I, it's going to look like that on the periodic table, not like this. Okay, That is actually a lower case L. So make sure that you are looking for that. There are several elements that use that. So, And if you have a lowercase i, it's going to have the little dot above it. So we can see the capital letters right there. So in this element, we have hydrogen, or this compound, we have hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Our next element of counting atoms is the subscripts. We've been able to identify what elements are there, but now we need to figure out how many subscripts there are. So subscripts are the number that is behind the atom. So you have a two and a four. And so what this is telling us is that hydrogen, there are two of them, and oxygen, there are four. And since sulfur doesn't have anything behind it, it's a one. So why does it mean that sulfur has a one? It's because in science, if there isn't a subscript behind the element, we assume that there's only one of those atoms. So for example, here we have chlorine, And phosphorus and so we assume that that is a one so we'd have two chlorines so let's practice whenever you are practicing this the easiest way to do this is to first list out the elements so we'll go through we're going to list sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. We're going to put equals. So we've identified what elements there are. Now, using the idea, uh, we're going to count them using subscripts. 
So sodium doesn't have a subscript after it, so we assume it's one. Hydrogen, one. Carbon, one. Oxygen does have a subscript. So we can follow this quite easily. One, 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 three. Let's try another. So we have hydrogen, oxygen, both of them have a subscript. So hydrogen is two, oxygen is two. We're gonna practice another. So you should be following along. So hydrogen has a subscript, oxygen has a subscript, Sulfur doesn't, but that's okay because we know that it should be one because there's not a subscript behind it. So two, one, four. Now let's add another uh, piece to this puzzle. So right here we have a coefficient. This is this number is only in front of a compound. You will never find it in the middle of a compound or anything like that. It is only at the front. Only at the front. All right? And the purpose of this is to tell us the number of compounds in a formula. So essentially, if I have 2H2SO4, what that means is that there are two compounds of sulfuric acid. That two means that there are one, two of them. And so that's what a coefficient means. So what does that mean for counting? Well, an easy way to do this is to basically just be like, okay, there are two of these, two times two, is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. And if we count these up individually, we'll see hydrogen here has 2, sulfur 1, oxygen 4, hydrogen 2, sulfur 1, oxygen 4. And if we add these together, 4, two, eight. So you can kind of just skip it. It's like multiplying, like the, the distributive property in math. So just showing you guys that again. So if we do our distributive property, our understood one, okay, we'll be able to figure this out quite quickly. So let's practice of one. So we're going to do the understood one. Okay. Let's start out with that. We're going to identify our elements. We have hydrogen, oxygen. So doing a distributive, three times three is nine. Three times one is three, three times four, 12. Let's do another. Hydrogen, oxygen, this is an understood. Two times two, four. Two times one, two. So let's make this last one a little bit harder. So now we're going to work with parentheses. So this is a, a, a bit more difficult um, as you go along, um, but a lot of people have struggle with the parentheses idea, but it's actually a lot like a coefficient and functions almost exactly like the coefficient, but instead of applying to the whole formula, it only applies to a section. Of the formula which is the section inside the parentheses so it only applies to that area and so essentially what it's doing is I like to call it kind of like a reverse distributive 
because now you have 2 times 3, 2 times 1. And so it's doing the same thing as a coefficient, but only to a section of the formula. And so if we were to solve this out, we're putting our lead, oxygen, oxygen. Okay. So we understand that this is a one. We don't, we don't have a coefficient up here. So it's also understood to be one. Okay. So one times one is one. And now we're going to do our revert. And so we could even do this to here. Okay. That's a one. That's a three. And so that's all, all checks out. Okay. And so what we'll now do is the distributive property in reverse. So two times three. Okay. For our oxygen will give us six. Two times one. Two. So it's really easy to do your, just like in math, you're going to do your parentheses first. That way it makes it a lot easier when you do the coefficients, if you have a coefficients with this. So always do the parentheses first, just like in math, and it'll make it a lot easier. So basically what this is breaking it down to is that at the two extra parentheses indicates that there are two sets of this. So just like that. And so it's just easier to just move things across. So let's practice with this. So we're going to start off. We do what's in uh, the parentheses first, but we have to put what our elements are. All right, so we're going to start by doing the distributive property here. Now we have an understood one right there. So three times four and that hydrogen, that would be 12. So you can kind of erase that, put 12. Okay, three times one, it's three. Okay, and so this is an understood one. Now this isn't in parentheses. This section is not in the parentheses. So we're not going to do any distributing because there's also an understood one for the coefficient. So we have one and four. Let's do, let's do another. So we're going to write down our elements, oxygen and hydrogen. And so we have understood one for the coefficient. And so we're going to put in one there. We're going to do our distributive. So hydrogen two, oxygen two, one, two, two. So here's a challenge for you. Um, you have this one that has both parentheses and a coefficient. I want you to post your answer in the comments below. So this has been Mr. Holsey with A Squared Sufficiently Understood Science. Remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit that bell notification to know when we post new tutorials. Have a great day.